Hey, hey, Marcus House with you here. Today we are building a space station around Kerb and we've been lucky enough to pick up this mission here. It has the typical components needed there. We need an antenna, a docking port and to be able to generate power, but we need to support at least 10 Kerbals and also have the mining convertitron unit there uh, so that we can convert fuel. To create this station though, we need a modified version of our space plane from the other week, which we have now called the Trident. This is the Trident 2 SS, standing for Space Station. This version of the space plane has not only the three massive cargo bays there on the bottom level, but also two more massive ones there piggybacking on top. Today on this mission, we are taking a well-rounded crew, one engineer, two scientists and one pilot. And we have our entire vessel here totally loaded with cargo to build our space station. So we're going to put that together here shortly. For now, we are going to launch this massive beast. Now, if you saw the space plane's younger brother from just a few episodes ago, you'll note the difference here. This one still has the 32 rapier engines, but it also has six whiplash engines here attached to those top two new cargo bays. That gives us a lot of extra thrust just to get us up fast enough to have those rapier engines uh, taking full effect, basically, and being able to punch us out of the atmosphere. Now, obviously, this footage has sped up a massive amount. In fact, if you try to load this vessel yourself, you'll see that the sheer number of parts in this thing pretty much kills off your frame rate. I think I was getting between, I don't know, maybe 5 frames a second and 10 frames a second through this entire ascent. So, yeah. So you'll see what I'm doing here is keeping myself leveled out around that 15 to 20 degree mark and that is making us slowly increase our velocity and as we get up past 400 meters per second we can actually start raising that nose to climb just a little higher. You can see here that as we start getting up to this velocity those rapier engines really start kicking in they need quite a high velocity to start really working well. Now before we switch these rapier engines into closed cycle mode here from air breathing mode, we just need to get to around 1400 meters per second, raise that nose, then switch on that closed cycle mode. And we're going to burn closed cycle here, which is obviously much, much less efficient until we get our apoapsis there to come up above 70 kilometers. So just about to complete that initial burn there, and there we go. So what we'll do now is just wait until... Uh, we reach our apoapsis, or very close to our apoapsis, then we'll complete our orbital insertion burn. Just doing a full powered burn here, just to get ourselves most of the way to orbital velocity. If you do want to do a perfect circularization like this, you're best to just slowly burn as you're just heading towards your apoapsis, and you can control it uh, actually really quite well uh, just in this way. So there we go, there we are at 75 kilometers. Now, just because we are doing quite a lot here in orbit, I'll time warp around till we just get to our sunrise here, uh, just so that I've got plenty of time out in the light. Okay, we can start unpacking all the components to our space station. You can see there in the top right corner, we've actually already achieved our mission. Uh, that's cheating though, we've at least got to put the damn space station together. Uh, so yes, we, uh, we are going to start removing all the components here from the bottom three cargo bays. Now over here on the right hand side cargo bay, we're going to start by undocking this little tug. Uh, this is our best friend while we're building this space station. We can't do anything without this. The reason why I've built it this way is because it means that we don't need to include RCS ports and monopropellant and all those components on each of our modules. Having a little tug like this means we can fairly dramatically reduce all the parts for the rest of our space station. So we're bringing this thing in here. And we're going to very slowly, gently coax the biggest component of our space station out here through the central cargo bay. And there it is in all its glory. It has a number of components for this central core. Now the next component doesn't actually need the tug because it is our escape module. This escape module uh, is going to be piloted here by our single pilot and uh, we're going to send this thing out and dock to one side of the central core unit there. Out she comes there. This module has the capability of returning 10 Kerbals all the way back from the space station. 
In case of emergency, that is, there should be no need to be sending a whole heap of Kerbals back from this thing because it is perfectly safe. There is no reason to be worried. Now, Marcus, you might say there is only four crew capacity for the hitchhiker container and only three for the command pod, so that's seven. Where are you getting ten from? Well, we'll show you that uh, in just a few moments. So we are docked there with our second module. What we'll be doing now is sending this tug back to pick up our third module. Our third module is basically our crew cabins. This is where our crew are going to be staying. This module here is a very tight fit. I had to use quite a bit of persuasion to wriggle my way out of this one. But wriggle out of it I did. And what we can now see is that we have uh, six Mark I crew cabins here and they can contain two Kerbals each. So more than our requirements of 10 Kerbals are supported here in this module. And just to make docking a little easier, what we can do is switch to our space station and we can actually uh, control from the docking port that we're actually heading towards and we can get it to spin towards our uh, incoming module here. And at the end of this module as well, you'll see we've got a range of docking ports. So if we need to receive another vessel, uh, we can quite happily do so. Very slowly coming in here. And there we go there, docked with that third module. Now, after you spend quite a bit of time putting modules together on a space station, you'll realize they are drifting apart. So we have our uh, ion engine module here. We can switch a few of these on. We're going to pop five of these on, and we're just going to wipe off our relative velocity and just slowly thrust in slightly towards that space plane just so that we're not getting so far away. With those two massive reaction wheels in the center of the space station, we can turn this thing on a dime. But what we're doing here now is we're heading over to unload our solar array module. There is of course no such thing as survivability in space without a good source of power. So we need this solar array module to keep ourselves well stocked and well charged. Just because we do not have any RCS on this module, we can actually use the RCS on our space plane to get the space plane out of the way. In we come, of course, again with our tug. We are going to come in and grab hold of the end of our solar array module that's got it there. And we're going to head back, of course, and dock this to one of the two remaining ports on our central core module of the space station. Coming in to dock this now, and you'll see there we've lost our light again. We have spent all that time on the light side of Kerbin. Uh, we'll dock this and we'll time warp around, I think. Had a little trouble here with this docking simply because the tug wasn't uh, wasn't attached to the module perfectly straight. So yeah, lesson learned there. So for visibility purposes, we'll time warp around to the light side of Kerbin again, and we'll burn those iron engines just to make sure we're not drifting too far away from the space plane. Using these massive reaction wheels again, we'll select our final docking port control from that and we will spin it towards the space plane just so that we're already pointing in the correct direction again. So we're sending our tug back now for our very final module. So we'll switch back to our space station while our tug is incoming, uh, close up those top cargo bays and open up the opposite side there on the left. Uh, now this final module is of course our massive communications array. I will point out of course there is absolutely no reason why you would need this many antennas on a single array other than it looking <laughs> looking kind of cool. So yes, uh, let's just say we are not going to have any issues with our ability to receive a transmission. So yes, just speeding through the footage here of this docking, you're probably getting a little tired of watching docking scenes here now. Uh, we're going to grab the sensitive end of this antenna. Just coming in there and... <laughs> there we go there, consider that part grabbed. Using that wonderful docking port alignment indicator mod, we can dock with ease. Bringing that final module there slowly in. And there we go there, docked, and our space station is now completely built. So as per the mission requirements, we have our ISRU unit, our Convertitron. Uh, we need our radiators there to dissipate heat while we're converting any ore. We just bought a little bit of test ore here just to convert to show you that this works. 
We have in this bottom service bay some fuel for our iron engines. This could be refueled at any time, of course. Now on the opposite side of this, we have our science module. Now the science module has got a, uh, a full suite of all of the science experiments tucked away here in this service bay. And of course it has a nice scientific cupola module there for observation. Now our return vessel here has got an extra four seats in the bottom service bay. You can actually cram Kerbals into those seats and they will be quite fine. You do need to make sure you're not coming in too far off retrograde though, otherwise some of the heat will actually break through the walls of that service bay and your Kerbals will be burnt alive, so you don't want that to happen. On the opposite side here, as we said before, we have every size docking port for all your docking needs. And of course, we have the full suite of the Mark 1 crew cabins there for all of our Kerbals. Seems a little unprofessional to leave our tug there grabbing hold of our communication array. So we'll actually dock this to one of those said ports. And uh, yes, that'll tidy all this up nicely. So we can extend out all of our communication gear here. And as well, we can extend out all of the massive solar rays. Now you'll see there the solar rays can actually be extended out in two directions. We're just extending out the one here right now. Uh, this will capture the sunlight quite nicely. What we'll do here is save our game so that we can quickly reload from this point on. And we'll do a quick test of our return vessel here. We're certainly not going to be too picky with this one. We'll land it down near the Kerbal Space Center, but we're just going to immediately quick load after we land anyway. So uh, let's get this thing going. Uh, and just to test it overly well, we'll actually come in at a very high uh, re-entry angle. So we should see that the heat buildup around this thing isn't going to cause us any problems. Down we come here, punching through that atmosphere. Obviously, again, we are looking at this footage very much sped up. So there we go, re-entry largely complete, and oh, we're getting quite close to those mountains. Uh, we should be right though, we should be landing right in front of them. And coming down, our parachutes are already deployed. Full thrust to lessen the impact, and there we go, there we are down. So there we go there, I would call that test successful. We'll quick load now back to our uh, space station where everything was all attached. Everything looking good there. We will switch over to our space plane. We'll close up those cargo bays. And of course now I've realized that we don't have a pilot on board, nor do I have a control unit, so that's no good. We have a spare space submarine from the other week though, and we also have a very stranded Burberry, so we'll come and pick him up. Burberry has been up here, of course, ever since our speed run to orbit challenge the other week. He has been waiting patiently for rescue and... Oh my god. Uh, yeah, I didn't mean to hit him quite that hard. Sorry about that, Burberry. I really must stop using you as a test dummy. We'll uh, exit you out here, send you over to our vessel, and uh, yes, we'll skip over all this. And uh, yes, obviously, we get Burberry to come and board our space plane. So in you come here, Burberry. It's going to be nice to have you home. Come in and board that vessel there. There we go. So in preparation for our landing, we will close up our three cargo bays there. For this particular save game, I've already grabbed all the signs from around Kerbin and I've processed all the signs around Kerbin, so I can't actually do anything right now with this space station. But there is always a future episode and a future mission to continue with this build. So it's time to deorbit our massive space plane. This is the first time, of course, that this has been attempted with the massive extra cargo bays on the second layer of this thing. So it seems to be quite happy punching through the atmosphere here. It's still nice and stable. We're not flipping or anything of that nature. Previous versions of Kerbal Space Program, of course, could be much more brutal with the re-entry heat. So uh, yes, I'm not sure how much easier that makes uh, these uh, Mark III components. Uh, of course, again, I've skyrocketed straight past the Kerbal Space Center, so turning around again, uh, and we'll come back and land this sucker, hopefully. We did, of course, switch our engines back into air breathing mode, so uh, yes, we are just coming in here nice and slowly. 
Engines off, air brakes out, and touchdown. There we go, there we are down. We have the parachutes out to slow us right there at the end. And yes, that is mission complete. Lanina Kerman wants out of this thing. She is very happy to be home. Out she comes, uh, waiting for the ladder to extend. And there... <laughs> oh no, I've just I've killed Lanina. What an ending to a very successful, uh, very successful tower. Well, it should have been successful. So yes, funerals now to be organised, I guess. But uh, oh no, she's okay. She's okay, Lanina. Get up, stop mucking around. Before we go though, we are planting some flags. We haven't done this for a little while. The first three flags we are planting here are for the very clever people out there that have found the hidden Easter egg in the video thumbnails. If you would like to be included in this flag collection, simply be the very first to actually find the hidden message in the thumbnail and tweet me the answer to the message. The next two flags here, this first one being for Eric, are for the winners of the First to Orbit Challenge from last week. Jonas, of course, here uh, getting the fastest time with a slightly more exploity uh, sort of solution there. So thank you everybody for watching and thank you to all my wonderful subscribers, you are awesome. If you haven't subscribed, of course, please do subscribe to see more. Follow me on Twitter at Marcus House Game, and we will see you in the next video. Like any journey though, there is no guarantee that Burberry is coming back. I mean, for starters, there is no fuel to return this thing. So here we go, attempt number six, the most skin roasting of all attempts. Let's launch this thing. Now I think I've perfected the ascent of this thing. I've had about 15 tries at this now.